Hello everyone. Today we discuss about the 8086 microprocessor. So first of all we discuss about that. 8086 microprocessor is a Intel first 80 cross 86 families and is the basis for all Intel microprocessor that follows. It was a 16 bit microprocessor first of all its data bus is basically 16 bits instead of 8 bit for 8085 and significantly differ from the earlier 8 bit devices and it has 20 address lines so that is 2 to the power 21 megabyte memory capacity is available for 8086 processor and various versions of the 8086 are operated on 5, 8 and 10 megahertz clock frequency maximum up to clock frequencies and now we discuss about the 8086 microprocessor internal diagram so first of all in 8086 microprocessor consists two main section one number one is bus interface unit or bi unit and one number two is eu that is execution unit so this is known as bus interface unit okay this is known as bus interface unit and this is known as execution execution unit okay so these two units are independent of each other and behaves as a separate asynchronous operational process now write down the EU unit execution unit contains arithmetic logic unit flags register and GPR that means general purpose registers and execution unit carries out all the arithmetic and logical operations and all the registers in the 8086 are 16 bit wide all the 16 bit data registers can be used as two 8 bit data registers and the bus interface unit control the address data so it is control the address line the data okay and the control buses that is the control signal generation the instruction fetching and queuing operand fetch and store and address relo relocation are the operation performed by the bus interface unit so that's why very important for us for the bus interface this action of bus interface unit and when the execution unit is, unit is decoding an instruction or executing instruction inside the microprocessor then at the same time the bi the bus interface unit prefetches the instruction from the memory and store them in the inst instruction queue for first processing and there is a concept known as pipeline architecture in 8086 in the letter we'll discuss about that and uh, one thing should be remembered up to six byte of the instruction stream can be queued while waiting for decoding and execution okay so now uh, we discuss about thoroughly what are the block diagram of 8086 internal block diagram of 8086 and the two units are there okay number one in the left hand side there is a block and this block contained data pointer this is known as data pointer first and index register for the indexing this is basically eight words okay now this is a common bus connected to another block this block is controlled 16 bit ALU operation and also generate the flag status that is flag values this bus is connected from here to here and here contained one another block known as segment register ECG register and one of the most important instruction pointer so this is a five word length five words okay so now the separate two units are shown in this diagram left hand side and the right hand side now here another block is contained this block is known as bus interface unit okay and uh, there is another block this block is known as six byte kiwi for instruction okay and then it's connect to with the another block which is known as 
control and timing sequence this is the heart of the micro microprocessor or brain of the microprocessor and here generate different signal like a lock complement later video in, in this later part we will discuss about the pin function they are generate test mode also this test mode and they are generate clock are applied and reset are apply here reset pin are apply here ready pin for yes very good for direct memory access control then there is a one pin is used for minimum and maximum complement 806 operating in a two mode basically there is another clock known as another pin sorry is known as hold and hold acknowledgement for hold acknowledgement for DMA process there is a non maskable interrupt information are taking from this and there is an INTR is INTR okay the non maskable interrupt and uh, there are many signal generation from the control block in the later video will be discuss about that and from here bus interface unit there one pin is available known as bus BHC or is known as A7 and from here we get A19 A6 to A16 to S3 and here we getting from AD15 to AD0 the address line and data bus are multiplexed together and they are uh, they are uh, that is uh, interrupt enable interrupt uh, acknowledgement sorry the read bar write bar pins are also available and uh, there is a ALE and IO and memory related operation also taking from this block so initially th these are the main block and uh, look here in the left hand side this unit is known as execution unit okay execution use execution unit and this is known as yes right pass interface unit so these are the two major part of the 8086 and one thing should be remembered that this QE, this QE, this 6 byte QE, uh, basically this 6 byte QE acts as a first in first out operation that is it is a first in first out. So first data coming out with the first out system buffer between the bus interface unit and the execution unit. The execution unit takes out the instruction byte as and when required the first byte into the QE immediately goes to the execution unit when the queue is empty after the execution of a branch instruction okay so this will be discussed in the later part but in this video we just only talk uh, talk about the what are the basic functionalities and what is the basic diagram of this uh, different segment in 8286 now we discuss about very important bus interface unit detailing about bus interface unit so first of all we discuss about the QE concept QE UE what is a QE so microprocessor 8086 contain consists of a FIFO first in first out register set arranged like a pipe and called QE. The bus interface unit continuously fetch operation from the memory while the processor is executing the current instruction. Bus interface unit stores the fetched byte in the QE and the execution unit will read this byte from the QE as and when it requires. The memory interface is usually much slower than the processor execution time. So this decouples the memory cycle time from the execution time now we discuss about one more important thing that is the segment register okay so 806 basically one byte one megabyte memory which is divided into segments or we can say that 806 memory is a segmentized memory and uh, there are at a time there are four segments are used these segments are named as uh, student please note down the four segments are known as code segment short from is CS then store memory is used stack segment they are separately arranged in a one megabyte memory and next data segment for the data storage operation code segment is for used for code and stack for stack operations and extra segment for extra operation like a interrupt or any any, any kind of services this is ES extra services extra segment are available each segment is 64 kilobyte long okay should be remembered that each segment is 64 kilobyte long okay should be clear in mind that and each segment is independent and separately addressable unit each segment is assigned a base address 
here one concept is known as base address we'll talk about that which is its starting location in the memory space all segment starts on 16 bit memory boundaries segment may be adjacent disjoint partially overlapped or fully overlapped we'll discuss about that in the later part so now basically 8086 consists four 16 bit registers we know that one is code segment register stack segment register extra segment register and data segment register these registers are used with the 16 bit pointers okay so now their code segment register data segment register stack segment and extra segment mind it these all are 16 bit registers okay and these registers are used with the 16 bit registers 16 bit pointer sorry uh, 16 bit pointers and index and base register to generate 20 bit physical address because 20 bit is a general address line of the to recognize the memory of the 806 so basically there are some points are noted out first of all the pointer in the, basically the pointer and then index register and base register these two register been important to convert 16 bit to 20 bit physical address requirement allowed to 8086 address from to recognize one megabyte memory okay the segment register point to the four immediately addressable segment so now we discuss about the code segment registers stash segment and so code segment register is 16 bit register which store the base address of 64 kilobyte segment and microprocessor instruction or program the instruction pointer is the by default register used by the microprocessor to access the instruction from the code segment okay and stacks for the stack segment it is also a 16 bit register and containing the offset address of the 64 kilobyte segment the segment is used as a stack memory which operate last in first out that is lifo principle we already know that and by default stack pointer and the base pointer there are stack pointer and the base pointer there are also two registers are the pointer register and in this process push and prop instruction are used to data insert and data retrieve from the stack memory and this concept also we are getting from the 8085 also so now we discuss about data segment data segment is a 16 bit registers and it's also logical address of 64 kilobyte long data segment and data segment is used to store the data by default uh, the register of this segment are known as these are the 16 bit register in in 8086 ax means that means 16 bit register that means this ax is partition in two form ah and al lower 8 bit and higher 8 bit bx also same cx and dx also same and their index registers are source index and destination index okay these segment registers cannot be initialized by loading the immediately value of the data segment register but can be changed directly using pop and lds instruction we'll later we will discuss about that and next uh, the extra segment is used also 64 kilobyte memory length and this segment the segment defined by the es register that is extra segment is used to store data this segment is by default destination location of string data which are always pointed by the destination index register okay we'll discuss about that in the later video we'll discuss about thoroughly concept about what are the actual functionalities of these uh, of these register using the, the block diagram method so now next we discuss about the block diagram of which is 8086 so this is very important now here one thing should be remembered that here in the left hand side we first mention our register unit so this is a general purpose register AHL first then BH BL then CH CL then DH DL and the register pair are AX BX CX DX and the pointer register stack pointer base pointer destination index and source index so now this is the execution unit EU okay this is the internal bus of 8086 okay now from here these bus are connected from here and connected one register known as temporary register and this temporary register is again connected to arithmetic logic unit section this is a ALU where the arithmetic operation performed and from this ALU the data comes out in the internal data bus and there is a one flag register from the ALU because depending on the ALU value the flag is generated and this flag value also 
transmitted to this to this internal internal bus in this internal data bus of 8086 okay so now there is one execution control unit this is known as execution control unit ecu and there is connection between these these are 6 byte 1 2 3 4 5 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 byte instruction these are qu u q e 6 byte qe and there is a one block is associated with known as bus control logic bcl and this is a external bus okay eb external bus i use short form because there is a very short space available here now here is a common part the divided part sorry and here in the block there are segment registers are used code segment extra, se extra segment stack segment and data segment and then instruction pointer and then one is known as instruction register is very important and now here the connection between them are known as the address is generated from here and from here also data was also generated this data this data is contained by this logic okay these are basically data bus okay and this address line is connected from here to here okay and this is a basically adder and here the offset value and the <coughs> the offset value of this code segment data segment segment register is kind of is uh, addition with the offset value to create the one megabyte memory in the later part we will be discuss about that so this is a part of the general purpose register so differentiate the block these are general purpose register unit this execution unit internal data bus temporary register these are temporary register for temporary storage operation and there is a connection between these and this okay so now this qe value is these are 1 2 3 4 5 6 this qe value is comes out here and taking the part in the data bus action so this is a bus interface unit bi unit okay so these are the main two part execution unit and the bus interface unit in a, in a 86 microprocessor okay and all the above stated segment have their own by default pointer but it is possible to change the default segment except ip used by general and index register by prefixing instruction with code segment data segment stack segment index segment will be followed in the next section now we discuss about the instruction pointer and address simulation so this is very important and this is a very important logic for a student please note down please thoroughly otherwise you will not get able for to understand how instruction pointer is selected one megabyte memory using 64 kilobyte segment memory so now we discuss about instruction pointer and as address simulation okay now first the ip contains the offset or logical address okay so now the ip is targeted to the offset or yes logical address and of the next byte to be read from the code segment in fact it shows that the distance of the current location in bytes from the base address is given by the current code segment register so now we see one thing that the content of a code segment so now if we see we see that here generation of 20 bit physical address so there is a block in a block we show that this is a segment register okay this is a 16 bit wide we already know that and here four value these content are coming here from here to here and here one adder block is and this is a yes right these offset value okay so this is offset value this is also 16 bit and these adder output is 20 bit because these offset value 16 bit and this is a 16 bit plus extra 4 bit so it generate basically 20 bit address line so these are operation and in the segment register say for example these are segment segment register say for code segment length 15 to 0 that is 16 bit and this is this is cross 16 or cross 10 hexadecimal and the instruction pointer is also 16 bit and between them there is addition of these two bit add between them and generate 20 bit address line also now what will do that how the op operation is performed and so first of all 
the we we can say that in this figure show how it is done the content of a code segment are shifted by left by 4 with 15 moves to the with 19 position that is code segment register the lower four bits are filled with zeros so see here okay okay clear and uh, our code segment value will multiply by decimal 16 or hexadecimal 10 so this is a bit shifting method and the resulting value is added with the instruction pointer see that the resultant value is addition with the instruction pointer so see here that okay to make a 20 bit physical address and cone segment makes up so here you see that now the code segment makes up a segment based address and the IP is looked as an offset into this segment so that's why the 20 bit address line is generated ok so this is a very important part of generation of 20 bit physical address from the each code segment data segment stat segment and using the instruction pointer also now we discuss about the block of execution unit so in the execution unit in the execution unit consists of four physical four f 16 bit general purpose register which can be used for eight data bit eight da eight eight bit data registers four 16 bit pointers and base registers and one 16 bit flag register please note down students this is a very important so first of all the 16 bit registers are available in this execution unit are ax bx cx and dx these are the 16 bit registers and individual 8 bit registers are H, L, BH, BL, CH, CL, and DH, DL. And these are the two 8 bit separation registers are also available in the execution unit also. And one thing should be remembered that the pointer registers and the base registers also mentioned here the 8085 micro the 8086 microprocessor contains 16 bit pointers and base registers please note down and these are i again repeat 8086 contains four four 16 bit pointers now the concept is clear and base register okay and these are these values are source index data index stack pointer and base pointer these registers are used to hold the offset value or the logical addresses within a segment the stack pointer is basically used 16 bit register to pointing the program stack base pointer is a 16 bit register to data in the stack segment and base pointer register is usually used to based base indexed or register indexed addressing in the later video we'll discuss about that now source index is a 16 bit and used for indexed base indexed and register indexed as well as source data address in string manipulation instruction next we talk about destination index and this is used for this also 16 bit register and is used for indexed base indexed and register indirect addressing as well as destination data address in string manipulation instruction okay so now we discuss about the very important register in the 8086 that is known as flag register these are basically known as status register and this flag is a 16 bit wide register in a 8086 because you already know that 8086 is a 16 bit registers are available in there so now these bits are basically don't care there is a no flag value associated with these are this value is known as overflow flag overflow flag this is known as direction flag this is known as interrupt flag or interrupt enable flag this is known as taste flag uh, sorry trap flag this is known as sign flag this is known as zero flag 
this is don't care this is auxiliary flag this is same as 805 they don't care this is known as parity flag this is known as don't care and this is known as carry flag so 0 to 15 there are 16 bit flag registers are available okay so between there are 6 are status flag 3 are control flag and this don't care means there is a not use not use this bit so carry flag is said if there is a carry or not sign flag is said if the if the result is negative or not or positive parity flag is said if there are odd number of one or even number of one is contained auxiliary flag is basically the shifting of carry between the third and the fourth bit during the addition of the two numbers overflow flag is basically to determine used for signed arithmetic operation if the signed result is of more bits than the destination operand then this flag will be set control flags basically controls there are two control flag known as trap flag eh, sorry three flags trap flag and this trap flag is a single step interrupt occurs when single step interrupt occurs then this flag is set and in there is another flag known as interrupt enable flag for interrupt enable purposes and direction flag is used for string related operation it causes string instruction to auto increment the appropriate index register source index or data index when it is set <coughs> okay now these are very detailed uh, detail uh, talk about detailed detailing uh, method uh, detailing of h six architecture so now we discuss about the pin configuration of h six so first of all it is mentioned that h six is a 20 pin dip package 14 sorry 14 dip package dual in line package that means in, that means in the 806 in each side 1 to 20 and another side 21 to 40 pins are available so this is a pin diagram mentioned so first of all we discuss about there are both uh, pin are used for both minimum and maximum mode because in the later video we discuss about the minimum mode and the maximum mode operation of the 806 but in this video this is a general pin diagram so first of all there is a first 16 pin are known as a0 to d0 to a15 this is known as address and data bus so this is basically used for both address and data line 16 bit operation okay so next we discuss about a19 slash s6 a18 slash f s5 sorry this is basically this is basically s5 sorry this is basically s5 okay next a17 please note down s4 and a16 s3 this is known as address and status line these are used for the these a16 to a19 are used for higher address bus and these s4 to a, s, s4 and s3 are the used for the status line so when this is zero therefore alternate data segment es are used and what is zero, zero one then Stack, stack, stack segment is used when this is g10 therefore code segment is used and then 11 one, one, then data segment be used okay so there are lots of functions are available lots of functionalities and the status signal s5 keeps the value of the inter interrupt enable flag the status of the interrupt enable flag is updated at the beginning of each clock cycle and the status signal s6 indicated whether the h086 is bus master or any other competent device is bus master okay okay now we talk about the another signal pin known as VAG bar active low pin and this is also known as the another pin I have seen with this is S7 this is bus high enable and this is status bit the bus high enable and the status bit this together show the status 00, zero means 16 bit uh, word will be accessed 0 1 means upper byte of the odd byte will be accessed 1 0 means lower byte of the even byte will be accessed and 1 1 means there is a none of the operation and this is basically used to enable the higher of the higher or the odd memory bank okay there are two memory bank in the 806 even memory and odd memory selection will be discussed about that okay next pin the pin is read bar pin this for used for the read operation from the memory and the IR oper I operation also ready pin used for DM access control and this signal is used to synchronize the slower peripherals okay sorry uh, sorry this, this is not a I'm sorry this is not a DMA it is used for the slower peripherals okay and this is active high input signal also 
then we discuss about the another pin INTR this is the interrupt request pin for the interrupt generation process and there is a test pin also available this is test pin is active low pin and this is generally connected to the BZ pin of the math processor 8087 we will discuss about that and NMI means non maskable interrupt for non maskable interrupt operation another pin is known as reset the 8086 and then clock for clock as an input of microprocessor and then one pin is available known as MN and MX complement that is minimum and maximum mode operation and then VCN ground and uh, this is the general pin discussion of 8086 okay this is the general pin available in the both maximum and the minimum mode operation yes so there are 40 pins are available and there are also another pin uh, uh, io slash m bar okay and these pins are not uh, discussed because these are separate in a minimum and the maximum mode operation but in this these pins are are basically common for both minimum and the maximum mode so now we discuss about pin details of 806 in a minimum mode so student please note down in a minimum mode the first pin is, is known as io bar slash m so this is input output and memory related operation are performed by this pin write bar is basically write operation this is internet acknowledgement so this is all are known as 8086 minimum mode pin pin functionalities okay interrupt acknowledgement then aele is used for address slash enable to select the lower address or data the dt next pin is dt slash r bar this is data transmit or receive operation okay this is data enable operation another pin d and complement okay then hold request for the dma sending from the microprocessor and whole acknowledgement received by the microprocessor or, or sending by the peripheral device dma controller so this is a pin uh, discussion of hj minimum mode now we discuss about pin diagram or pin functionalities of 8086 in a maximum mode for this there are three pins are associated s2 bar s1 bar and s0 bar okay these are the status pin and this status pin when this is 000 it is used as an interrupt acknowledge when when this is 001 this is read iq port when this is 010 read a write iq port and this is read iq port and this is write iq port and when this is 0011 it is halt when this is 100 code access when this is 101 then read memory then 110 write memory and then 111 this is a passive operation okay okay now next we discuss about the pin of rq complement gto0 comma rq complement gt1 complement complement and also it is known as io request or grant okay i request again this signal are the same as that hold and hlda in minimum configuration okay and these pins are used by other local bus master to force the processor to release the local bus at the end of the processor's current machine cycle okay each pin is bidirectional with rq gto having higher priority than rq gt1 so this is a higher priority comparison with this the next pin is known as lock complement okay so this pin is active low output signal if the signal is active then the other bus masters will not be allowed to take the control over the system bus okay next one is queuing status pin there are two pins are related basically these two pins are very important the queuing status related information this 00 means no operation 01 means first byte off of code from queue are taken 10 means empty the opt uh, queue 11 means subsequent byte from the QE. okay so this is for today this is that is all for today the discussion about the basic 806 features are available in 806 microprocessor thank you that's all for today